Hello, Prober. Howdy, howdy. Welcome to But It Was Aliens, the extraterrestrial comedy podcast where we probe the existence and validity of extraterrestrial life so you don't have to. Because you know you would if not. Each week, we take it in turns to bring a case to the table for investigation. I'm your lead investigator this week, Moonwalker, and I'm joined by my investigative compadre, Senor Greybeard. Arriba! Today, we're taking a look at a case that occurred in Texas. Houston, Texas, to be exact, in 1973. Judy Doherty was with her daughter, her two sisters, her mother and her brother-in-law. They spent the night playing bingo. There's no record to say that they won anything, though. Were they playing bingo at a bingo hall or playing bingo in the family? Oh, bingo at a bingo hall. Okay, so we've got other witnesses that can corroborate their presence and anything untoward that may occur shortly. Maybe. (laughs) (laughs) When they finished, they went by Auto Loma to drop off Judy's sister and her brother-in-law. The party dwindles. Not long after dropping them off, the remaining four were witness to a strange light. This light wasn't moving. It stayed stationary, but it didn't look like a star. (laughs) Or what you would typically see. Because it caused the women to stop the car and get out to have a clearer look at it. They stayed and watched it until the light disappeared. Once gone, they continued on their way to Texas City. What would a stationary light have to do for you to stop your car and get out, Greybeard? This is 1973. Yep. So I wonder back then whether knowledge of planets, not the, not the knowledge, sorry, but whether the experience of seeing planets in the night sky was not so well known. So if you saw Venus back then, you might think, what the hell is that? Get out and look. Whereas today, you'd probably just pull out your phone and see that it's Venus. Yeah, that's a good point. On the wrong night. Or maybe... Uh, that, no, maybe not. I was going to make a comment about the moon and perhaps them witnessing a blood moon. But then I thought, well, they'd still know it's the moon. It's the they? moon, yeah. Blood moon. So what would a stationary oh. light <laughs> have to do for me to stop the car? A stationary light. Blind me is what it would have to do. (laughs) If I was blinded, I would stop the car. I think for me it would have to change colours. Or involve boobs. Change colours. Flashing boobs. It's not a stationary (laughs) light though, is it? Stationary light on boobs. That car is stopped. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) There's no reference to how much time had passed... That was going to be a question I was going to ask, actually, and I sidetracked myself. We don't know how long they were looking at the light. Could, that it, is have, true. could it have been one like um, the Men in Black device, the Neuralizer? Neuralizer? Oh, we do this all the time, don't we? And get the name wrong. Neuralizer? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, did they see a, <laughs> did they see a massive, Neuralizer? massive light? <laughs> did where am I? <laughs> Did they see a massive neuralizer in the sky? I bet it's called like the nebulizer or something, really, isn't it? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Go with neuralizer. Uh, did they see a massive one of those in the sky and it froze them and then they're about to get stuff done to them? About to get pro. Yeah, I didn't want to use the word because it probably is what's going to happen. <laughs> like we said, there was no reference to how much time had passed. Mm-hmm. But Judy started to suffer from extreme headaches and anxiety after. Ooh, radiation. Not instantly after, but a bit down the line. Judy did the sensible thing and sought help from a doctor. However, this didn't help, so she sought help from another. Still no help. Mm -hmm. So she sought help from another. And another. And another. And another. Crikey. Nothing. Help the lady, damn it. (laughs) Nothing helped. So she was referred to a well-known ufologist and hypnotist, Uh. (laughs) Dr. Leo Sprinkle. Who made the referral? Was she self-referred? 
There's no record of who made the referral. It just says she was referred to him. And what help were the doctors providing that didn't work? Had she tried paracetamol? I am not a doctor. Therefore, cannot say what help she would have received. Hmm. Dr. Leo Sprinkle is well known. This is Leo. But (laughs) I'm sure this is the first time I've ever heard of him. It's, we've covered so many at this point that they all sound familiar. I'm sure I'd remember the Leo Sprinkle. <laughs> so here's a bit of background on Dr. Sprinkle. Born in 1930... In a jar of hundreds and thousands. Dr. Leo. <laughs> Dr. Leo... <laughs> you fucking bastard. Dr. Leo grew up and obtained his bachelor's and master's degrees from the University of Colorado and completed his doctorate in counselling psychology at the University of Missouri in 1961. Official doctor. Sprinkle's interest in UFOs began after he had a sighting in 1949. He and his wife also had a sighting in 1956. Intriguing. Okay. He served as a psychological consultant for the Condon Report (laughs) on UFOs. We've definitely mentioned that one before. (laughs) Which led to further work on several abduction cases through the 1970s. What he's best known for is for the annual conferences he organised every summer since 1980 for a number of years for contactees. And here is a picture of Dr. Sprinkle for you, just so you can put a face to that name. (laughs) Okay, man who looks to be probably in his 40s to 50s, a moustache, very finely trimmed around the mouth, spectacles, bald, with the old hair around the sides by the ears, looks Slightly pleased with himself in the photo. I'd want to say that's a pencil moustache, but it's not. Not quite, no. He's wearing the expression on his face as if he's in the room with the photographer taking this photo. Just the two of them, and it's quite a tightly enclosed box-like room. And he's just popped a fart. (laughs) And he knows that the photographer is about to smell it any second. Uh. And he's trying not to laugh. (laughs) He's trying so hard not to laugh. (laughs) Again, we'll have to post this on our socials. He's he's sprinkled some (laughs) shit. (laughs) (laughs) Dr. Farr's sprinkle, I'm such a kid. Because of the experiences that he's had, this led him to recommend hypnotic regression. Bingo! (laughs) Ah, you said they played bingo. (laughs) To those of you... uh, We'll be drinking your hand, take a drink. So he recommended hypnotic regression to Judy. He believed it would relieve her of her emotional trauma. Does it though? Does it not create emotional trauma? The people we cover who have had this therapy don't seem to do too well. I don't think we've covered a single one that's been fine after. No, they tend to come up with things that may not have actually happened and get even more distressed and they have to stop the therapy. Mm. <laughs> Who's going to do the hypnosis? Is it going to be Dr. Fart Sprinkle? I cannot remember, to be fair. I think he did do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picturing that smile on his face again <laughs> as he's performing the hypnosis. <laughs> well, let's one out. Just Close, before he Close your eyes. <laughs> Close your eyes. And then as they've got their eyes closed, That's sitting down on the chair, grin. he's standing. He walks right by their face. <laughs> Sprinkles it. <laughs> You've been sprinkled, bitch. Oh, Such children. I know, but fuck the fart sprinkle. <laughs> Under hypnosis, it came to light that Judy had allegedly, truthfully, been abducted. <laughs> of course it did. By she- Dr. Shit Sprinkle. Judy went into detail. One of those details was that as well as being abducted herself, a cow had also been taken. Yes! I've been waiting for this! Yes! Come on, a cow! She explains that whilst there, she saw the cow being mutilated 
by two small entities. No, poor cow! What do you think was going to happen to the cow? They'd do the same as they do to humans, probe it and drop it back home. I didn't think they mutilated them in their spaceship. Oh, good point. I thought if they were going to do that, they'd do that on the side of the road, like what happens to the cows. They didn't just butcher the cow. The mutilation oh, no. was done with precision like a surgeon. Well, you'd imagine they probably were medically trained if they were doing what they were doing, because from their perspective, they're probably doing scientific experiments, aren't they? Yeah. They're not actually mutilating. It's just what we perceive it to be, because it's savage. She also describes the feeling of being in two places at once. She says she was still standing beside her car after they'd stopped to watch, but also, at the same time, she was in a strange chamber watching the mutilation of the cow take place. Two places at once. Have I ever told you about the best dream I ever had? So you know the Supergrass song, Pumping on Your Stereo? Can you hear us pumping on your stereo? Yes. Have you ever seen the music video to it? No. In the music video, you're going to need to Google this after, they are all like puppets slash caricatures of themselves. Like it's them. They're real heads and whatnot, but they've got really, really long puppet arms and legs and they're all playing the music just in one room. I think I have seen around. That, yeah, to be fair. Yeah, and like massive long necks and stuff. I had a dream that... I was in that video and I was all four of them playing the music and singing the songs. Was it four or three? I think in my dream it was four. Playing the music, singing all of the exact same time with like the long arms and long legs and they were all me. I was experiencing it all at once. And the only word I can describe it as is euphoric. It's bonkers. Brilliant dream. I woke up so happy. So not just <laughs> four of you, you in I was all of them four at once. different places yeah. at once. Yeah. Yeah. Strangest Ooh. dream, yet best dream ever. Never had anything like it before or since. And every time I hear that song, I just smile. <laughs> yes, Good I can know. hear you pumping on my stereo. <laughs> How long ago was that? Oh, I must have been mid-twenties. Quite a while then. Hey, <laughs> son of a bitch. So there is footage of Judy's regression therapy out there in a documentary by Linda Moulton Howe called Strange Harvest. But I couldn't find it anywhere online at all. Except someone on Amazon had a VHS. For all you millennials that grew up with DVDs, VHS cassettes were big bulky tapes that we used to watch films on. You had to rewind or fast forward if you wanted to watch anything again. It used to take ages. Yep. There was no 32 or 64 times rewind. It was like... One speed. Yeah, yeah, one speed for the whole thing. So it could take like five to ten minutes to rewind the whole film. And if you didn't do that at the end of watching the film, that next time you wanted to watch it, you had to do it then. Ball ache. I always round at the end. Me too. What's your fondest memory? Of a VHS greybeard. I don't know about fondest. Well, actually, I, I can I can give you two memories. One I wouldn't say fondest, but it's a very early memory of mine, and the other is just a general memory. My family, when we were little, so I would probably be only about six, seven, eight years old, we used to go to the VHS shop every, and this is before like blockbusters Ooh, even. We'd like go every to Friday the VH, night. Every Saturday was fish and chips and a video. That was. Me and my mum every Friday. Yeah, and fish and chips literally cost a pound for a portion, so it wasn't even expensive. And yeah, I'd always want to get the same video. <laughs> and the other memory that came to my mind was I used to love the Teenage Mutant Ninja slash Hero Turtles. Depends on if you're talking about the cartoon or the comic and film. Mm -hmm. But I was obsessed with them when I was very little, when I was like five years old. And... I don't really know why, but a live action version of them were appearing on an Oprah Winfrey talk show that was being <laughs> shown in the UK. <laughs> and I recorded that and I was enjoying it so much that during the advert, I started watching the recording thinking that I could watch it all before the next segment came on. 
<laughs> Again, I was like four or five years old. So yeah, I recorded like a 10 minute segment, started watching it again in the two minute break, <laughs> thinking that it would be over by the time the next segment started. Oh. Kids, eh? I'd have to say my fondest memory is wrestling over here. Oh, wrestling. So like pay-per-views yeah. are at, or used to be at one o'clock in the morning. And I remember recording WrestleMania 14. Ooh. Is it 14? Austin Michaels. Yeah. Yeah, that was 14. WrestleMania 14. I went, ooh, because Shawn Michaels was my favourite. Uh, and he obviously lost and had his back injury just prior to that and was gone for several years after that. And the excitement I felt in the morning running down those stairs to rewind that video to watch it is amazing see now i don't know if my parents were either really good or really bad here but they used to let me start to watch the pay-per-views and so i'd come into school the next day i can remember at our school and i'd be one of the only ones who'd actually seen the pay-per-view at the yep. time and i'd be spoiling the results <laughs> <laughs> you clearly didn't tell me the results because we wouldn't be friends i reckon if you did <laughs> i think you were less strict on spoilers then you just wanted to know what happened and yeah, also sure. this is like year eight year nine at school and I think we only came across each other in about year, a year. Late year eight, early year yeah, nine, wasn't it? French, we first, and then we started playing football and whatnot, didn't we? So I wouldn't have known you very well in year seven. That is true. I wouldn't have known. Spoilers. You're lucky. Nowadays, <laughs> I would not go near you with a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> My gosh, there is no one on this planet more sensitive to a spoiler than Granville. <laughs> My gosh. Cut you out of my life. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I reckon if you had a child and the child spoiled something, you'd stick them up for adoption. Good Lord. I wouldn't have a kid anymore. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's get back on track. <laughs> yeah. Judy's description of what happened had been divulged by Moulton Howe in a radio interview. Whenever I see her name, I always think Leonard Moulton. And Sydney Poitier. I thought you were referring to Judy, and I was going to say Judge Judy. <laughs> Judge Judy and Leonard Moulton. In Moulton Howe's interview, Judy saw a pale yellow beam of light come down, but it didn't take her or anyone that she was with. Instead, it took a small brown and white calf. Now, she doesn't remember being taken up herself. More so, once the cow was taken up, it's as if she was there watching instantly. She witnessed various organs being taken, the eyes, tongue, and even sexual organs. Do cows have, like, big sexual organs? Everyone's seen a horse. I can... I've never noticed a cow. Neither have other I, than but the others, I'm pretty but sure they're not really sexual in that instance, are Sexual they? organs than just a penis. Was it a male or a female cow? It was just a calf, I've no idea. Oh, poor calf. She was just there. Is it possible that she wasn't just there, but that she did the mutilating herself? <laughs> but on the side of the road. So, yeah, this hypnosis has got her memories all twisted. But there was actually like, say, oh, or did she get so disturbed by what had happened? They'd hit a cow and they parked the car. That big flash was actually a big crash. Where they've hit the cow, they park and she starts like putting it out of its misery and whatnot. And then that memory's got all twisted into what we are now. That hadn't crossed my mind. Or is she some crazy cow murderer? During her session with Sprinkle, Sprinkle asks her... I'm sorry. <laughs> Dr. Fart Sprinkle. Is there anyone around you? <laughs> There's a long pause. Not a 10 second pause. Not a 20 second pause, but a 45 second pause before she answers. Two little men. They're described as being three and a half to four foot tall. Grey skin with large egg shaped heads. Your typical greys, it would mm. seem. Made popular by that Zeta Reticuli case we covered in episode 21. If you'd like to scroll, I have some pictures of the greys for you. <laughs> Is that Family Guy? Or what is that? 
American Dad. American Dad. So that is a pitch I obviously haven't... We've had a discussion before and you told me off, but I've not seen American Dad. But we have a fairly typical grey, slightly disproportioned compared to popular culture, but pretty close. With what appears to be a plunger on its junk. <laughs> it is plunging its dick. And then we have the same type of grey having finger sex with E.T. By finger sex, I mean... You know how E.T. has the glowing finger? He's putting his finger against this grey alien's finger and they're both glowing together. E.T. doesn't look like he's enjoying it at all. The grey looks like he's really enjoying it. E.T.'s got four boobs. <laughs> I was literally <laughs> about to say, why has E.T. got four boobs in this picture? Maybe. I, I don't even know. <laughs> Not going to question it. Another part of the session, Judy describes the light beam. She describes it shining down on the back of her car and mentions it has a substance to it. She describes the cow being taken. She could see it squirming and says it's like it was being sucked up. She mentions something else to Sprinkle that hadn't been mentioned before and that is she could see her daughter Cindy on an operating table and that they took some samples from her. Okay, before you go on, because that's grim. She is saying that she saw it being sucked up. Mm -hmm. Earlier on, didn't she say that it was as if she was just there already and the cow appeared? That's Linda Moulton's uh, version of events. I'm Regardless. Or I'm, what she says that Judy so, Yeah, so there's some inconsistencies. Okay, continue. I'm going to... Buckle up, because it's about to get dirty. They just ignore me. She says they just carry on as if she isn't there. She explains that they don't have any emotions. It's as if they don't care. If you were abducted and you saw a cow being mutilated, you see whoever you were with at the time laying on an operating table, what are you doing or attempting to do at that point? Well, I'm definitely not considering whether they care because I'm assuming they're probably going to do similar to me when they get to me. I'm going to be trying to escape and save the person that's with me. The cow, it sounds like it's too late for. So sorry, cow, you're on your own. Had they not have already started pulling bits out of you, maybe I'd have tried to save you and fight them. But whilst they're distracted with the cow, I'm trying to rescue the other person and run. Maybe find a weapon. Like if you're in, for example, a cylindrical tube mm. and there's no there's nothing around you you can't move mm -hmm. I am scanning that room as soon as one of those grey motherfuckers come in I'm planning to crack their head yeah. on the nearest object it might not have any effect whatsoever but I'm giving it a good shot yeah I think at this point the key is that you're fighting for your life yep these things have taken you and you've seen them mutilating something else so it's not like you're at the point of reasoning with them or trying to make friendly contact they've not done that they've taken you against your will they're mutilating things around you there's not much choice at this point for me other than trying to fight your way out of it and survive it's not it even might... it's not even fight or flight because there's nowhere to go it's yeah. just fight mode yeah had they have made contact on Earth and approached us, then it might be different. You might not be looking at that as your first port of call, but in these circumstances, absolutely. Years later, Cindy herself would also undergo regressive hypnosis. <laughs> Christ's sake. Those of you drinking, take another drink. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. We don't have the transcript or any information about what happened but her session allegedly truthfully corroborated her mother's story. We don't have any information, then how can we say that it corroborated it? That's that's nuts. No. You need information to be able to corroborate. You can't just say it corroborates. I'm not having that. Nope, nope, nope. It corroborated it, Kevin. <laughs> it's a fact. No, it's not. Judy released a statement on February 1st, 2003. I'll summarise her statement rather than reading it through. Dr. Fart's brain called release the fart. <laughs> she starts by saying that she has no doubt that abductions exist. During her abduction, she says that there were 16 eyewitnesses that saw the craft. 
but not all remembered the abduction. Cindy was 14 at the time of the abduction as well. Their encounter was first reported to Ellington Air Force Base in Texas, who denied that anything was on radar at the time. She also mentions that there was another sighting by three people coming back from a bingo game in Houston that got burned by the effects of the sighting. She also mentions that hers happened almost a year before theirs. Mm. I think she's talking about Cash Landrum. Yeah. Although I'm sure the years don't match up. So we covered that in episode 25. And like I said, but that's not until 1980. Unless there's another little case out there for us to probe. There may well be, but by the time we get to it, we're probably going to have forgotten this one. Yeah, probably. <laughs> it's getting a real problem for me at this point. They all kind of roll into one. Yep. I think because we do so many at a time mm. and a lot of them do cross over in parts as well yeah there's similar details at times isn't there yeah I, the way i try to do mine is that when i cover one that say a sexy one when i say sexy i mean sexual <laughs> not that it's actually sexy <laughs> a sexy time one and then i'll try and do one like ufo sighting serious one i just grab the nearest thing <laughs> oh yeah but oh. like when i Write like them, I'll order them in that way. To oh, say if I the last one I've done is like a sexy time one, I pick another one. We've got a massive list basically of probes that we're going to cover, and we pick them at random from that list and investigate them. Obviously, the other person stays away from it. And yeah, if I've covered one that's a sexy time, then the next one I pick happens to be a sexy time one as well, then I'll put that the next one back and stick the next one in. Makes sense. Mm. So, Judy says that so much happened that night, she wouldn't attempt to go into detail. We were all changed and have never been the same since. I do declare. They were ridiculed so much by others who weren't present, which was mainly family members. So much so that Judy didn't talk about it for a few years. She then says that her husband returned from Vietnam and they were stationed in Yuma. She heard about APRO, called them, and told them about her sighting. And the next day, Mr. Doherty and his wife and a doctor named Rose Tennant, who had experience in hypnosis, mm -hmm. came and spent the entire day going over what happened. Always trips me out because her name's Doherty and this is Mr. Doherty. Yeah. But they're spelt differently. <laughs> but just saying it trips me. Yeah, that tripped me a little bit. I wondered if you'd made a typo in the notes. <laughs> She says that a few details began to surface and the amount that surfaced started to relieve her. She remembered relieve being... Relieve her how? <laughs> I think oh, just... This information is so good. Relieved her in the fact that things happened or mm -hmm. the fact that she wasn't suffering from not knowing anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she remembered being given some form of formula by the Greys. And she thinks it's that which caused a lot of her problems. She doesn't say anything to anyone else. And she was still scared of ridicule. And by formula, I don't mean scientific formula. But in terms of a liquid, like yeah, the American yeah. type of formula. Yeah, I got what you mean. So details relieved her, but we don't know what the details are, essentially. I think it's the details about the formula and stuff. So she was given a drink, essentially. Well, wait, how was she given it? Did we cover that? No. So they could have stuck it in her or they could have given it to her to slip. So we slip, have the story to start. Yeah. And then yeah. everything that we're going to hear now is from her statement. Okay. So she was given an awful lot of alcohol by someone. <laughs> Got a little bit drunk. Hit a cow on a field by the road. <laughs> Got out of the car. Mutilated Bring the cow. <laughs> <laughs> okay so she's hypothesizing that a formula gave her radiation poisoning in essence i guess isn't she because they were talking earlier on about similar symptoms headaches and whatnot yeah she was getting extreme headaches and mm. stuff a few years later she got a call from linda moulton howe who tried to convince her that she needed to be regressed again for a tv documentary which was strange harvest about the regression for Strange Harvest, Judy says, 
I fulfilled Ms. Howe's agenda. She got an Emmy for her documentary, but that she was left with that information in her head that still needed siphoning. Judy asked her to help her write a book to be able to tell the amazing things that she was told and shown. Moulton Howe agreed and then kept putting it off. Hmm. According to Judy, both her and Sprinkle used her for their own agenda and had little else to say to her. She pulled herself into her shell again and spoke to no one before she was contacted by Sightings, which I think is a TV show. Okay. Who asked, yeah, who asked her to do a follow-up. She called Moulton Howe, but Moulton Howe told her that it would make the story unbelievable to the general public. So she turned it down. Only to find out later that Moulton Howe had a rift with, <laughs> with sightings and that was the only reason she didn't want her to do the show. Why did she have a rift with the show is we, what I'd like to know. Yeah, we don't find did out Did they why. call her bullshit and she didn't like it? Maybe. Oh, juicy, juicy mango. So ten years prior to this statement, which would be 1993... Mm -hmm. Judy was told by someone in the UFO community that Moulton Howe had gone to Kirkland Air Force Base and was warned that Judy should keep her mouth <laughs> shut. Friend. News that Moulton Howe didn't tell her directly, but got someone else to call her and tell her. Apparently, the government didn't want her to talk about the formula she was given. So Judy was 63 when she made this statement and said that before she dies she would love to know what many already do and why they don't want her story told Judy would now be in her 80s if she was still alive okay so she thinks that I've completely lost my trail of thought there why would they not want her to talk about the formula Are they... is she suggesting that the military actually gave her the formula no then why would they give a shit? Surely they'd want to cover up the whole event, not just the formula. Precisely. That makes absolutely no sense to me. What are you talking about? Judy, makes sense, you fuck. <laughs> I just don't understand that. <laughs> but she's got onto the UFO circuit, I guess, is what we can take from that, appearing on TV shows and whatnot, or trying to. She was invited on them, though, rather than tried to get out and go on them. Mm. If you were invited on a TV show, would you go? Depends why I was invited. Something like this? Um, I don't think so. Because I know how things can be edited and made to look. Mm. So I don't know if I would. Uh, if something happened to me, genuinely happened... I'm not sure if I'd be thinking about whether people believe me or not. Yes and no. I think I would ask for a clause to be put in to say that they show the whole interview and nothing gets cut. Hmm. Or, or you see the final cut. Or that I see the... Yeah. yeah. So that they at least portray you truthfully and don't snip it to make you look bonkers. Yep. Fair. Or I get a copy of it. So if they do pull that shit, hmm. I can be like, well, this is what actually happened. So, to summarise, we have Judy Doherty, who was travelling home with family when they noticed a stationary light. They stop to get out and observe. The next thing she knows is that she's having extreme headaches, doctors aren't able to help, and she's referred to a ufologist. They do regression therapy and uncover more. Name the ufologist. <laughs> Dr. Sprinkle. Name him fully. Dr. Fart Sprinkle. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> A cow is abducted and Judy is somehow on the craft watching, whilst also being next to her car. During her regression, she mentions little grey men and also seeing her daughter on an operating table. Her daughter during regression therapy a few, a few years later corroborates the story. In a statement from Judy, we find out that there was another story of three people that got burned during their sighting. She explains that she felt used by both Sprinkle and Linda Moulton Howe and that they only used her to help them with their agenda and nothing else. 
before being contacted by a third party ufologist of MHs saying that the military want her to keep quiet. I feel like she just went a little bit too far at the end with the whole military stuff and they want her to keep quiet about the formula rather than about the whole incident. That just seems awfully peculiar to me. And the kid corroborating the story, I don't think we actually covered when we spoke about that bit, that if you've heard this story from your mother, then when you go under hypnosis, that suggestion's already in your mind. You're more likely to believe it. Yeah. In the part about the military and stuff like that, I don't think the military were even involved in the first place. Yeah. I think Linda Moulton has used her and her story to get famous off it Mm. and now doesn't want anyone else investigating it or Judy to tell the story because then people will be able to start picking holes in it. Yeah. That's my claim to fame. She's already got an Emmy from it. What? Yeah, she got an Emmy for the documentary. Bloody hell. So... If it now comes out that this is all bullshit and... Did she cover it from the perspective of this is all fact or did she leave the viewer to decide? I don't... Because that can very much change. I've not watched it, but she's very much on the UFO side. If anyone has seen that documentary, let us know what it's like. Yeah, please do. Invest your time to let us know whether (laughs) we would be wasting ours. (laughs) I couldn't find it anywhere. Like, yeah. nowhere at it all. It might be more available in other countries. Yeah. Sometimes you find that things are on Amazon or Netflix or whatever in other countries that aren't in this country. So, yeah, for me, and the fact that after the documentary, Linda wouldn't really have contact with her. And then it was this kind of third party that mm. told her that the military wanted to keep her stum. Yeah. I'm not saying that it was aliens. Why? Because of everything we've just discussed. But she got an Emmy. <laughs> <laughs> so? <laughs> People get Oscars. That doesn't make the films true. Yeah, I'm I'm not saying this was aliens. There's just not enough meat on the bone. And there's too much suspicion and ulterior motive and slight elaborations on the story and differences in the story for me. I think personally that fart sprinkle and um, <laughs> linda moulton have used this woman and just like i said for, or like she mentioned furthered their careers yeah absolutely and absolutely just left her in the dust no mm. need to pop up and say the military want you to keep quiet or else so that doesn't cause her any trouble further down the line mm, yeah i agree so this is not aliens. But Dr. Fart Sprinkle is the best person (laughs) we've covered. (laughs) Definitely got to put that picture up so people can see exactly what that smirk is like. That is a fart smirk. (laughs) It truly is. If you've enjoyed this probe and you haven't done so already, please take less than 60 seconds out of your day to leave us a five-star review wherever you can. We would greatly appreciate it. And if you can mention Dr. Fart Sprinkle in your review, I will read it out on a future episode. Now that's out of the way. You can find us on Instagram at But It Was Aliens podcast, on Facebook at But It Was Aliens, in our Facebook group, Extraterrestrial Towers, and on the Twitter at But It Was Aliens. And... Now, we also offer you side probes, our Patreon exclusive episodes, where we side probe other tales from myths to legends, cryptids to bullshitters. So, if you'd like to help support us that way, we'd love it. We'd still love you if you don't. But if you do, Greybeard may strip for you. We're out! (laughs) Hashtag probe!